Welcome everyone to the video on using Quartus to create a 3-bit binary ripple counter. The schematic shown here shows the 3-bit counter that we're going to produce. Before we start Quartus, we need to create a folder to hold uh, the files that's going to be created uh, in Quartus. So coming to our um, Windows Explorer, then we open up or we access the local drive C by clicking on the local drive C colon and then we go to our course that we've created the folder that we've created and in this case we've named it course one we go inside of there we create a folder by going to file new folder and we're going to call this one week one then we're going to go inside of that folder create one more folder we're going to call it W1L1, for example, week one, lab one. Uh, we need to keep the uh, names descriptive but short. So that gives us a place now, a folder that we can place our files into. Okay, so now we can open Quartus. Once Quartus opens, then we need to create a project. In order to do that, we go to File, and then we say New Project Wizard. That begins with uh, the introduction, so we can just click Next. On the second screen here, we need to point quarters to that folder we just, just created. So we click on the ellipsis, we click on the drop down arrow, choose Local Drive C colon, choose the course uh, folder, choose the week, and also choose the folder inside of the week. Notice that quarter, Quartus now has picked the week one L, W1L1 folder. Now we need to give the project a name. Let's call it W1L1. We'll call it the same name as the folder. It helps us keep track of that. And say open. And notice now that we have the directory filled in and also the name of the project is filled in. So we can now choose next in page two then we have the add files which we don't generally have any files to add so we just simply click next on the third screen here we need to ch uh, choose the family of the PLD and the specific PLD device that we're going to use the family is going to be the Cyclone 2 family and the ch uh, specific device number is going is going to be the EP2C8Q and we'll scroll down till we find that EP2C 8Q EP2C 8Q 208C8 alright EP2C 8Q 208C8 and then we can choose next on the um, EDA tool settings we don't have any just next and then simply finish up on the summary page now that creates the project and actually saves it in the folder that we created earlier our next step is to create a PDF file and we come to uh, new we come to uh, BDF choose block diagram schematic file say OK and a blank block diagram file opens we need to save that by simply going to file and saying save as <coughs> Quartus chooses the last folder that we were in which was W1L1 and it also names it the same folder as the folder W1L1 and then we say save and notice now that we have uh, the block diagram file saved as w1l1 bdf so so all of our uh, folders files etc are going to be labeled w1l1 all right so now we need to create this counter the three uh, flip-flops so we need three flip-flops to begin with so where are the flip-flops well uh, we can get to them a couple of different ways um, i like to right click on the blank space and say insert symbol the library comes up and then I need to choose from either the mega functions other or primitive library and see if and find the flip-flops well I believe they're under primitive and under storage 
and I'll scroll down and I'll find the JK flip-flop and I'll choose OK and then I'll just place it in the work area. All right. I like to uh, build my counters so that the least significant bit is on the right and the most significant bit is on the left and that will require me to change the sides that the JK and the Q are on. So to do that I right click on the counter on the um, JK flip-flop and tell it to flip it horizontally and notice simply what that does is put the JK on the right side and the Q on the left side. Now I need two more of these so I'm going to right click on this and say copy and then I'm going to click in the middle here and just say paste and I'm going to line that those two up alright and I'm going to click again here and say paste again give myself a little bit of space in between them alright and they, they look reasonably lined up here alright so now I need to let me look back at the original schematic so that took care of the, the, the three flip-flops Now notice that my clock inputs are the uh, need inverters on them okay well in order to get inverters on that I go back right click say insert symbol and this time I need to find the inverters okay so and what I'm looking for is a not gate so I think it's under logic and I'll scroll down here until I find a not gate and I choose OK and I'll put it there and as you can see it's facing the wrong direction so I'm going to right click on that flip it horizontally and I need two more of those so right click again and I'm going to say copy I'm going to put one of them here so I'm going to paste it here okay and I'm going to put one, on, one more of them out here and I'm going to paste it here okay so that takes care of my not gates alright so now I can do a little bit of a wire a little bit of wiring here so I'll start from the right hand side and I'll wire this not gate output into the clock input here I'll wire this output into this input alright go here come down to here and come over to here oops and come over to here alright notice that I left a little uh, line with an X on it well that's going to create an error unless I remove it so I can actually just draw a little blank uh, a little square around it and press my delete key and notice that it goes away alright so now I'll connect the output of the NOT gate to the input of the second flip-flops clock repeat that process here come here come down to here and then come over to here all right and then finally to get the clocks done I'll come to there okay so that'll take care of my uh, my clocks coming into my flip-flops all right next let's look at this I've got J and K are tied together for each flip-flop and they're tied to a logic one up here okay well we don't have a logic one per se in Quartus but we can get that by using uh, going back to insert choosing symbol again and what we want to find is something called VCC and I'm going to just type that in under name and notice that it shows up there I'm going to click OK and I'm going to put it right there alright so now I'm going to copy that because I need two more of them and I'll put one of them over here and then one more time I'll put it over here okay and I'm going to do my best to line those up so that they are all in the same row now to, co to connect the J's and the K's together I'll come over and I'll tie that into there and I'll tie J into there now I'm going to repeat this here for the second flip-flop okay and one more time for the third flip-flop and I've got my JK's tied together and tied to logic one alright now I've got the asynchronous input set also tied to one so let me go get those and I'll tie those over here okay tie that one tie that one and I'll tie that one 
All right, so that takes care of my set inputs. I've got those tied to logic ones, making them inactive. All right, now I need a couple of inputs here. So I'm going to right click here, say insert symbol. And I can find those. I think they're under uh, pin. Okay, yeah, here we go. Input, I'm going to choose that. And I'm going to put one of them right here. Okay, again, notice that it's facing in the wrong direction, so I'm going to right click on it and flip that horizontally. All right, while I'm here, I think I'm just going to name it. So I left double click on it and I'm going to type uh, CLK as far as the name of the pin and click OK. That actually names the pin. And now I'll just wire it up here while I'm here. All right, so I got that taken care of. All right. Um, looking back at my uh, schematic one more time, I have this these asynchronous clear inputs tied together. All three of them are tied together and tied to an in input called clear. So I need to go create myself another input. Insert symbol. I already got the input there, so let me put it out here. Uh, right click on it. Let me flip it horizontally. All right. So now I'm going to take this guy. And I'm going to tie him here and tie this clear input here and this clear input here. And then while I'm here, right click, oops, double click, left double click, and name this C L E A R and say OK. All right, so that takes care of my, um, my two inputs there. All right, so now I need to create my outputs. I've got Q0, Q1, and Q2. So I need to create those uh, as outputs. So very similar type situation before. Right click, insert symbol. I want an output this time. All right, so I'm just going to type that in, say OK. And I'll put that up here. Now notice that it's kind of, I guess I could use it that way, but I'd rather point them straight up. So I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to, I am going to rotate this 90 degrees to the left. And notice how it goes up. And let me drag this over here just a little bit. And then I'm going to connect that down to the output of uh, the first flip-flop. Also, I'm going to double click on the name and I'm going to call it Q0. Alright, so I got that tied here to the output of the first flip-flop, Q0, and I've got it named Q0. I'm going to copy that by right-clicking, saying copy. Come over here and I'm going to paste it. I'm going to move it up just a little bit. Didn't mean to let it fall quite on top of that one, but it did. So it fell exactly on top of that and it made it an automatic connection. If it had not, then you could have just connected it. And it also noticed that it renamed it. Alright, so now let me paste that let me copy this one more time and let me paste that in one more into um, the schematic again for the last output. All right, and I got it. Notice it also uh, named itself Q2. So I got Q0, Q1, and Q2. And as I mentioned earlier, you can see that my LSB is on the right hand side and my MSB is on the left hand side. So I've got my three um, three output bits here. I've got my clock, my main clock input and my main clear input. And this is the uh, uh, Quartus BDF file for a 3-bit binary ripple counter. And that concludes the video.